and welcome to Americans Learn. My name is Lauren, and today I'm looking at a Dino Guy video for the first time. This one is the Many Interpretations of Spinosaurus, Part One. So, uh, yeah, this was uh, this came up as a suggestion on my Vividin video, um, which is still fun to say. Um, but yeah, so someone suggested the Many Interpretations of Blank series that Dino Guy did. So that is what I am doing. Looking forward to finding out what um, he's got to say about Spinosaurus. Let's begin. Spinosaurus is my favorite dinosaur, and it's probably one of the most popular dinosaurs out there because cool it one. shows up practically everywhere and everybody likes to talk about it. It's, of course, a dinosaur that changes quite frequently, and so its representation in media always seems to be a little bit outdated by current standards. And that is what we're talking about. We're talking about the Spinosaurus designs that showed up in shows or movies, documentaries, things like that. And there he is. I was looking to see behind him. Like, cause he's, it's my favorite dinosaur. I was like, I see kind of several stegosauruses, but then, and now I looking and I do see a couple of, a couple of spinosauruses on there as well. So I was just checking his, checking his bookshelf. Just, oh my gosh. Oh no, for a second, there's like a little dinosaur on the corner here. And I was like, is that the lamp? I can't tell if it's like a dinosaur lamp or if it is uh like just on the floor next to the lamp. I can't tell. And kind of talking about their designs, the kind of route that they took with the designs, um, if they were accurate for the time or if they were never accurate to begin oh, with. Cool. I'm not going to be talking about video games and things like that because Fair. I know that Spinosaurus has shown up in other media. Um, I'm just sticking with those two right now to kind of keep it cool. as brief as possible. Uh, but if you want to, I can go, I could dedicate a separate video to video games and other media that Spinosaurus has showed up in. But for now, this is what we're doing. We'll go ahead and start off with our childhood, Dinosaur King. Dinosaur King is what you want to be, yeah. Did you guys watch Dinosaur King? No. <laughs> I watched Dinosaur King. Every Saturday morning, I was just straight to di Dinosaur King. That's cute. I did not watch a lot of TV as a kid, shockingly, I know. I just, I wasn't really allowed to watch a lot of TV as a kid. We had like a limited amount of minutes that we were allowed to watch TV a day. It was like 30. Um, and then... We also didn't have cable. And then like the channels we did get, like PBS, were really fuzzy. So it's like we just didn't really have good TV <laughs> as a kid. And of course in it, they had this guy named Spiny. He was of course my favorite dinosaur because again, Spinosaurus was my favorite dinosaur. And uh -huh. it's design, I'd say, is pretty representative of his favorite our dinosaur. thoughts of Spinosaurus at the time. At, at that time, Spinosaurus was quite a bit different from what it is now. Oh. It was a lot oh, more uh, representative of the typical theropods with the longer legs, the regular rounded stiff tail. All in all, it's pretty good as a as a Spinosaurus design. It's incredibly recognizable, and when you look at it, you'll probably say that that is a Spinosaurus. And honestly, it definitely probably. fits the whole style of the show, especially now. Now that the show is like pretty old compared to a lot of us now, because like a lot of us grew up with that type of show. And if you'd look at it, then yeah, it's like kind of like it's a pretty time capsule painful to the past. To it's really cool to see things like that. See oh. like what dinosaurs look like in the past. And I mean, I, I, I like he's like it's cool to look at it. I was like, it kind of hurts me to look at. <laughs> I was like the graphics. I'm like, ooh, oof. Glad we've evolved past that. And by evolved, I mean improved. Next up, we'll go ahead and talk about the planet dinosaur spinosaurus. Ooh. Once again, this is a design that is very representative of the time. Planet this dinosaur came cool. out in 2011. Um, and at that time, there was next to nothing known about the animal. Like, we had very fragmentary remains that were actually destroyed in a museum well, during World bummer. War II. And so we had basically nothing to go off of with this animal. Most of what we had was that. brought in through comparisons of other Spinosaurids, such as, like, Baryonyx. And, of course, this design represents that, but uh, it's really accurate for the time, which is good for a documentary because it actually presented real information and its overall behavior was really cool too, especially seeing it swim with the pressure sensors, integrating that into that is its cool. overall hunting style and then like integrating its claws into how it hunted and things like that. And the design looks pretty good too. It does seem to have osteoderms, which I think that this is common for Spinosaurus a lot. We don't really have evidence of osteoderms. And again, these look like osteoderms. So I'm just going to say that they are, but I think that they're What's an osteoderm? Explain! We're gonna look it up. All right, Wikipedia says that osteoderms are bony deposits forming scales, plates, or other structures based on the dermis. Okay, cool. I probably could have figured that out based on the fact of osteo and dermis, but I could only remember in the moment what dermis meant. So, okay, bones on the skin. 
They're mainly placed in there to kind of like represent the osteoderms of modern day crocodilians, or as the osteoderms on those guys are more commonly known as is scoots. And it's because there was a lot of features that are very reminiscent of crocodilians. So I think that one of the things that they did was just apply more features to the Spinosaurus designs, such as the osteoderms. It's a very good design for its time too, and it's a lot of people's favorite interpretation of the animal, even though it's incredibly outdated right now. Aw, bummer. It does look cool though. You know, it means we're learning more about the animal. It's not a bad thing. Thing that things like this become outdated it just means that we're learning more about these animals as time goes Fine. on Fine. Yeah. i like that way of thinking about it but also i like that old dinosaur yeah we might learn more in the future it's just spinosaurus was an interesting case because it was known from fragmentary remains from the get-go and those remains themselves were destroyed so like there really wasn't a lot about known about the the animals so of course over time, we're going to learn more about it. Sticking with documentary, we will go with Bigger Than T-Rex. This is the National Geographic uh, documentary that was released shortly after the quadrupedal idea for Spinosaurus. So if you don't didn't know, oh, eventually okay. more fossil material of Spinosaurus was found and more of a picture cool. was drawn of this animal. And it was... It led to the idea that Spinosaurus was and was a quadrupedal animal. And it would kind of walk on its knuckles to prevent breaking oh. its claws. And this is definitely I did not a know that. idea. It's one that didn't really last too long, okay. which is... I was like, I'd never heard of it. I'd never heard of a Spinosaurus being quadrupedal. Like that... Okay. Interesting. Like, little time capsule Pop back to 2014 for a moment. We thought maybe it was quadrupedal. That seems interesting. Fortunate because they developed a really good uh, documentary around it, um, really kind of detailing how we led to that conclusion. But eventually the center of gravity was shown to be in a place to where Spinosaurus would be with bipedal locomotion and not okay. a quadruped as was shown in the documentary. So this is of course outdated. The overall design looks really good though. It, it definitely does. looks like a Spinosaurus and it, and it incorporates the kind of notch design into the sail, something that became very popularized after a lot of paleo art depicted it like this. It's not something that we necessarily know about. Um, we don't really know the exact way the sail looked like, so this could be as accurate as any other. Keeping with that, in Amazing Dino World, another documentary, Spinosaurus is briefly shown. I mean, it might be shown more in Amazing Dino World, Dino World 2. I haven't gotten the chance to see <laughs> that yet. But in the first one, it's shown briefly before being attacked by a mosasaur. And Aww, of course, bummer. incorporates the, the quadrupedal idea. I believe it came out around the same time that that idea was fresh, which is actually a good thing because that means okay. they were... Uh, pushing to have accurate dinosaurs in their documentary and, and really kind of taking the things. time to apply like those new studies to, you know, give you an idea of what these animals really look like, even though it's incredibly outdated right now, you know, also along with the tail. I don't think I mentioned the tail yet, but Spinosaurus really. did have a more paddle-like tail, which is very oh. interesting. It's a recent discovery and its lack of inclusion is not the fault of the filmmakers of the projects. Okay. <clears throat> It does make sense that it would have a paddle-like tail if it was doing more swimming stuff, though, to like be able to move a little bit easier through water. It makes the Spinosaurus an incredibly unique theropod because most other theropods do have this kind of stiff, rounded tail. But now we move on to one that I don't think was really ever trying to be accurate, and that is the Monsters Resurrected Spinosaurus. Now, I think that this show was primarily going for getting butts in seats, and so they wanted to makes make sense. as cool-looking animals as they possibly could. And that is definitely apparent with this Spinosaurus design. It's very, it's got, it's very awesome, rock. bro. It has spikes all over the head. It's like you know. gargantuan. It completely annihilates everything in its path. Um, I really like the sail color, though. I like how bright it is. That's a cool one. But yeah, it's shown <laughs> right. as like a primary apex predator for all of the land animals that were was around it. Um, never really incorporated any of the... Pisci the Piscivorous Diet to Spinosaurus. I'd say that this documentary is not okay. really a good representation of Spinosaurus, even for the time. Um, I think at the time we were kind of leaning more towards the Piscivorous Diet, and okay, they so wanted, they showed it, you know, annihilating Carcard, Onosaurus, Rugop, Sarcosuchus, all kinds of different animals. Um, done fishes. I don't think the Sarcosuchus lived with Spinosaurus. So there's that. Too. Wow. It's very that's a kind of really terrible documentary. Godzilla like, then. I guess, with arms facing the wrong way and, and, and stuff like that and oh. of course our, our our interpretation of it now is completely different to our interpretation of it then anyway still it sounds like that particular documentary was particularly egregious uh about taking its artistic liberties 
but this wasn't even accurate for the time. And finally, the Jurassic Park 3 Spinosaurus. This Spinosaurus is the Spinosaurus of all Spinosauruses. <laughs> I say that because this Spinosaurus is the one that popularized the, the oh. dinosaur into the media. Like, this is what gave it kind of the household name that it has now. It's very infamous in this movie, I'm completely annihilating a T-Rex that people were not happy about. Oh. And I've explained in another video that I think that it was kind of a curse that Spinosaurus showed up in this movie because we knew nothing about it. We had no fossil oh. material of it whatsoever. All we had were some images and descriptions left from it. And we know it looked cool, so of course we're going to put it in the movie, but yeah. And Jurassic Park really did kind of solidify, I think, a lot of what, if you, certain dinosaurs, whatever you think of, you probably think of the one you saw in Jurassic Park. And people kind of left it at that for a lot of them, I believe. So it is, that is kind of a pity then. He's right. It's initial discovery, and that's all we really had to go off of. And because of that, now that we've learned more about it, people like it less and less Aww. because their idea of Spinosaurus was its interpretation in Jurassic Park 3. It's truly un unfortunate because Spinosaurus is an incredibly interesting dinosaur that was, you know, suited for its specific ecological niche. And that niche is just completely different to what people, you know, perceive it sounds as like it was cool, more watery um, than, or uh, what they land. initially wanted that niche to be for Spinosaurus. Mm. But all of that aside, this design is accurate for the time. It's oh, okay. we, again, we didn't know least. anything about it. At the time, Spinosaurus was simply seen as a baryonyx with a sail on its back. And that's because we had to use other animals to kind of fill in the gaps of, of this of this animal. And that's definitely what you see in the movie. It's just a giant baryonyx with a sail on its back. And yep, I'd say that that is definitely accurate to what we believe Spinosaurus looked like. And it's an it's like, iconic is design he gonna, in and of itself. Is he going to like give us like what a little bit more about what they actually looked like at some point in this video? I mean, there's a couple of parts in this particular series, so it might come at the end of all of the parts. But hmm. I, I would like to know a little bit more now because like he's he's piqued my interest to a point because I'm like, he keeps saying that we don't know anything about it, but we know more about it now than we did. So I'm like, what, what do we know? What do we know now? What's different? Tell me, dino guy, tell me. Self, and definitely works as it's kind of in-universe design, one that they've carried over into Camp Cretaceous, which is good. You know, you got to keep up that continuity. And I like the design, of course. I think it's Again, it's incredibly iconic, and I have no issues with it whatsoever. It's an example of science progressing on from 2001. And again, it's a good thing that we learn more about Spinosaurus. It's not a bad thing that things like this become inaccurate with time. It's just, you know, we're just learning more about this incredibly unique animal. I just wanted the excuse to talk about Spinosaurus a little Fair. bit more. As I said, it was it's my favorite dinosaur. This is not in any particular order. I just wanted to take a look at these specific designs and kind of see what sets them apart from one another and how they are how they differ from the real life animal. Of course, they're all extremely different to our current understanding of the animal. I don't think we've really gotten an updated view of Spinosaurus in modern day documentaries or movies okay. or anything like that. Um, and a lot of that could be that people, that documentary and filmmakers are simply just Waiting. Avoiding it because yeah, because if they've been wrong over and over again, I do. I, I think he did some different. I think he jumped around in times, and I kind of wish he'd been a little bit more linear. But like, yeah, if if you've been proven wrong pretty quickly after your documentary came out, you might take some more time to get a little bit more accurate information before you make another documentary or throw it into another movie. Because, of course, it might be obsolete in a few years. And, yeah, that's very much the case because we are constantly learning more about Spinosaurus, and we probably will continue to learn more about Spinosaurus. It's an incredibly weird dinosaur, and I'm truly excited to learn more about it. But, anyway, thank you guys so much yeah. for watching, and have an awesome day. You too, okay, dino so guy. Okay, so there is going to be a part two. Um, if people want me to watch that part two, I will. Um. He's got some cooler dinosaurs on this one. I like that he moves around his stuff. I've tried occasionally to move around my background, but it, it doesn't really work out too well, so I've just kind of given up on that. Um, you can't see it very well anyway. You can, got a headband and a hat over there. I don't know. I got lots of nonsense. Anyway, um, so that was the part one of Spinosaurus. Um, so we're going to... Next time, there's two more parts. Um, there's a more inter interpretations of Spinosaurus in media and the many Spinosauruses in video games. I would be curious to see if he has a video about like, what do we actually know now?
about Spinosaurus? Because now I would like to know what do we actually know about Spinosaurus? Because because I don't know anything about it. I knew that it had the sail on it. That was all I knew. So <laughs> interesting, though, to like see how how things have changed and sort of evolved over time. I do find that kind of thing interesting. So thank you again for watching. Um, if there's something else you'd like me to look at, go ahead and let me know. Bye-bye.